Texas not only recently signed constitutional carry into law, but also something that's an even bigger F you to the federal government. According to a new law signed by Texas Governor Abbott, silencers are no longer subject to federal law within the state. I'm going to break down what that means after this. The Selmark family of brands offers a huge variety of stuff for the hardcore enthusiast and weekender alike. Whether you need body armor from Bullet Safe, Red Dot Optics from Sightmark for your rifles and pistols, maybe you need a weapon tripod from Kofjäger, or maybe you're looking for something even more fancy like thermals and night vision from Pulsar. They've got you covered in so many ways. To learn more, check out these brands at retailers everywhere, or hit the links in the description to learn more. Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton and you are watching The Fight for Gun Rights. This is a show all about Second Amendment news and we would love it if you got subscribed, followed us on Instagram, or just left a like on the video. That would be cool too. On June 15th, 2021, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed into law HB 957. We're going to walk through what that is and talk about what it means for you. The start of the bill says an act relating to local, state, and federal regulation of firearm suppressors. That's exciting to hear on its own right. As we move down through the bill, section one is actually set up to amend current government code by adding chapter two titled firearm suppressor regulation. To keep it less confusing, since most of the bill is being added under this chapter two, I'm just gonna assume that you understand that. Also, any of the underlined text that we show on screen from the bill is part of that addition. So, okay, so chapter two, subchapter A and section 2.001 is the definitions for the rest of the text. These are pretty straightforward, so we'll skip over that for now. Subchapter B is titled Intrastate Manufacture of a Firearm Suppressor. This outlines one of the keys to this new law, which is the suppressor and all of the key components being manufactured in the state of Texas. It says, for the purposes of this subchapter, a firearm suppressor is manufactured in this state if the item is manufactured in this state from basic materials, without the inclusion of any part imported from another state other than a generic or insignificant part. That means like screws and springs, etc. It also says that the gun it's attached to doesn't really matter. Section 2.052 is titled, Not Subject to Federal Regulation. I like the sound of that. <laughs> it says a firearm suppressor that is manufactured in this state and remains in this state is not subject to federal law or federal regulation, including registration under the authority of the United States Congress to regulate interstate commerce. It expands on this by saying a basic material from which a firearm suppressor is manufactured in this state, including unmachined steel, is not a firearm suppressor and is not subject to federal regulation. I like that they added that in there. Section 2.053 says that a suppressor made and sold in the state must have the words made in Texas clearly stamped on it. Section 2.054 appears to state that a U.S. citizen that lives in Texas has to write to the Attorney General to declare their intent to manufacture a suppressor, and then the Attorney General has to seek a declaratory statement from a federal district court in the state of Texas that the section declaring that it's not subject to federal regulation is consistent with the U.S. Constitution. That part is a bit confusing for me. It seems to say that we have to wait and see if it's constitutional or not, and I'm also not sure if they have to do that every time, but maybe I'm misinterpreting the law. If you lawyers out there wanna jump in and help me understand this backwards BS, I'd love some insight. Moving on from there, subchapter C is titled Enforcement of Certain Federal Firearms Laws Prohibited. In longer terms, this section outlines that law enforcement may not adopt a rule, order, ordinance, or policy that purports to regulate a firearm suppressor. It also says that no one employed by law enforcement or under the control of law enforcement may enforce or attempt to enforce any federal statute, order, rule, or regulation described in the previous section. Great. Section 2.103 goes on to state in longer terms, again, that any law enforcement entity 
will be denied state funding if they adopt such a rule, order, ordinance, or policy. Yeah, no money for you. That's great. Section 2.104 is titled Enforcement, and that says a citizen can file a complaint with the Attorney General if they have evidence to support an allegation that law enforcement entities in their area adopt a rule, etc., that goes against all of this. It says it in way longer terms than that. It also says the Attorney General can attempt to stop it through a bunch of different means and relief and blah, 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 blah. It's a long way to say they can go after them. And that pretty much covers the part of that bulk added section to the penal code. Beyond that, sections two and three outline that they are striking the parts about silencer from the current penal code that is no longer going to be against the law. Section four says that this only applies to silencers that are manufactured on or after the effective date of this law. And section five says that a criminal offense against the previous version of the law may not be prosecuted after the effective date of this act. However, a final conviction that exists on or before the effective date of this act is unaffected. And lastly, section six says that this act takes effect on September 1st, 2021. Okay, so what does all of this mean for you? On the surface, making your own can within the state of Texas will be legal at the state level after September 1st. Holy crap, that's awesome. However, this does not mean that it will be legal on a federal level. I mention that specifically because something similar to this happened in Kansas already in regards to their Second Amendment Protection Act. Two guys ended up facing the wrath of the federal government because they went against the NFA regulations with making silencers. It's a little bit more drawn out than that if you want to look into it. There's news stories about it all over the place. According to them, they were essentially collateral damage between the state and federal government dispute over this kind of thing. I can only assume that Texas would run into similar issues. At the same time, marijuana decriminalization is happening everywhere, which is awesome, and it's having a similar battle where it's still illegal federally, but states are saying F you and not enforcing federal laws, and the federal government isn't really going after that. They're not pursuing it in big ways. It's sort of a weird gray area that could, if more states have the balls to do this, play a big role in the decriminalization of making your own so-called NFA items. I mean, they wouldn't be NFA items after that. It's impossible to say how this will go down. It's really like, I can't even speculate until someone goes forward with it and the federal government decides to go after them for doing so. On the flip side, if a massive amount of people go out and make their own cans after this goes into effect, it could be nearly impossible to enforce. With Texas being on record for having the most silencers of any state registered by an almost 300,000 silencer lead over Florida, it's easy to see that Texans are not messing around with their hearing protection and love to have suppressors. This, this whole thing will be something to watch later this year for sure. As per usual, I wanna hear from you guys on this one. Are you in favor of these laws? Why or why not? Do you think it's a good thing? Sound off in the comments below and let's talk about it. Also, if you don't mind, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends so we can make sure that more people are up to date on all of the things happening here in the US in regards to gun laws. If you haven't yet, be sure to follow and subscribe. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.